It was 1976, my sophomore year at Bellman Appel High School in suburban Atlanta. That's me on the right. I'm not embarrassed to say Farrah Fawcett was my idol. You're just dawdling. I know it. Oh, wow. Now, come on, now get on the bus. Anyway, this is the story of a near life ending event that helped me become who I hope I am today. It all began with a silly game of truth or dare. I returned. One of these little girls just exposed her fanny to me out the back bus window. I have driven 20 miles behind this bus just to let you know exactly how trashy every one of you little tramps is. And I want to assure you that were I in charge, a moral tragedy like this would never, never have happened. I am so disappointed in you girls to do such a thing to a woman who is obviously a, a, a sweet and fragile thing. Now I want the girl who is responsible for this moral tragedy to turn herself into me. Right this instant. Which one of you attacked this woman's vision with a view of your fanny. Well, now, don't you all pretend you don't understand what I'm talking about. Patty, can you tell me who is responsible for this? Very well. Here is my name and my telephone number. I expect to be contacted first thing Monday morning by the Dean of Students so that we can rectify this ugly, ugly occurrence. Y'all must feel really ugly down deep inside just knowing that one of you is just a little tramp-a-tramp. -tramp. 
shame. Shame on you. Shame. I mean it. Shame. We know who Jesus loves and who he does not. <laughs> After a weekend of sleepless nights, Monday morning finally arrived. During morning announcements, the cheerleading squad was told to report to the headmaster's office. I could smell impending doom hanging in the air like the odor of old sweat socks. As a matter of fact, they're coming into my office as we speak. Headmaster Sanders Johnson was you. a tall and handsome man, the cause of quite a few schoolgirl crushes. Dean Stern was his exact opposite. It was a known fact that the orange glow of his face was due to Coppertone QT tanning lotion. With his slight stature and orange face, Dean Stern was the dead ringer for an Oompa Loompa. Well, first, I, I feel it's important for y'all to know that Miss Fellman suffered a case of the nerves due to the events last Saturday. Yes. Now, as none of you has come forward and admitted to this tasteless show of bad manners, Dean Stern and I have decided to interview each one of you personally. Now, if you'll all wait outside. Chop, chop, girls. Except for Boo Keller. Boo, we'll start with you. Hurry up, y'all. Katie Thomas, I believe you're last. Miss Thomas, we already know who the guilty party is. We wanted to give you a chance to clear your name. I did it. But I didn't mean anything by it. I didn't even see that lady driving behind us. Well, I expect you realize you will have to be punished. You are hereby suspended for one week, starting today. You will be required to write a letter of apology to Miss Luella Comstock, the lady you so grievously offended. And most importantly, you will no longer be a member of the Junior Varsity Cheerleading Squad. Now, if you will go with Dean Stern to his office and call your mother so she can pick you up. But Well, you should have thought about that before you moan that poor woman. <laughs> Mr. Johnson! Oh, come along, hush up all that bawling. <laughs> I knew it was you. I always thought you was a little hussy, and this just goes to prove it. Lord have mercy, you probably slept with half the football team. That's not true. Bop, bop, little miss. I don't believe I asked you to say anything, now did I? I want you to call your mama. I want you to tell her the awful thing you did, and I want her to pick you up immediately.
Anderson Electronics. Mama. I'm going to tell you what's happening. Mama, I need you to come pick me up at school. Tell her exactly why you've been suspended. I got suspended from school for shooting the moon out the bus on her way home from the football game Saturday. Oh, Lord, Kitty. They're putting my daughter in jail for shooting someone. Where in heaven's name did she even get a gun, Kitty? No, no, Mama. I, I didn't shoot anybody. And I'm not going to jail. I, I shot a moon. That means, that means I showed my fan at Tell her you pulled your panties down past your knees and lifted your skirt. But I didn't. Tell her past your knees. I pulled my panties down past my knees and then I got my skirt. Oh, Kitty. I might get fired if I leave work. Can I come during my lunch hour? She wants to know if... If she may please come during her lunch hour. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. She must come pick you up immediately. <laughs> I don't want no Jezebel hanging around my office all day long. But it's just during her lunch hour. The answer was no. I don't grant favors to the likes of you, Scarlet Woman. I'm sorry, Mama. The dean says you have to go pick me up now. Oh, Lord Kitty. I'll be there as soon as I can. Okay. Okay, Mama. <laughs> may, may I please have a tissue? <laughs> Just use your sleeve. <laughs> Let's go home. Uh, Miss Thomas, before you leave, uh, might I have a word with you in my office? Oh. Thanks, sir. Oh, how best to put this. Uh, would you ever show your fanny? At the back end of a bus? No, of course not. Of course you wouldn't. No proper woman would. Only a hussy needs to expose her body parts to strangers. And uh, that's what your daughter is, hussy. Makes me wonder what kind of woman you are. I mean, you know the saying, an apple don't fall too far from the tree. Miss Thomas, I know that your husband left you uh, quite a while ago. Perhaps Kitty's behavior is a sign. She needs a true disciplinarian in her life again. Maybe so. I have some excellent books at home on the discipline of teenagers. You'd be welcome to come over some evening and peruse them. Perhaps we'll share a glass of rose wine. Oh, oh, well, thank you very much for the invitation. I surely will keep that in mind. Um, can I go now? I really have to be getting back to work. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Just uh, don't forget to take me up on my invitation. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Goodbye. Uh, Dean Stern, thank you. Thank you for your time. Since I couldn't go to work with my mother, we decided I should visit my granny. She lived in a retirement home 15 minutes away by bike. The home was so beautiful. In fact, some old buzzards were so eager to get in, they'd hover around waiting for the next resident to kick the bucket. My really potted husband. Hush up, ladies! Now, if I have told you once, I've told you, you have to fill out these forms first. Now, come on, ladies. 
Hey, Lula. Kitty, kitty, honey. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, your granny is waiting for you in the rec room. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's my granny, Blanche Gaskin, sitting in the chair. She was a natural beauty, never used perfume, just a touch of vanilla on each rib. She was witty, feisty, had a mischievous twinkle in her eye. I've always hoped to one day be as great as she was. Now I need you to stop that crying so you can tell me what this is all about, Angel. I got suspended from school this week. Well, I was beginning to wonder why you were able to spend so much time with me. Why'd they suspend you? Oh, thanks, little dear. Well, uh, they, um, we were riding back from the football game, and um, Patty Barnator, um, she's a, she's the captain of our cheerleading squad. Well, well, she dared me to, to shoot a moon out the back of the bus. Right out the back of the window? <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> And that's it? They suspended you for a little prank? Yes, ma'am. And they kicked me off the cheerleading squad, too. And then Dean Sturt called me into his office, and he told me that, that I was a Jezebel. And he even accused me of, of sleeping around. And then he made Mom come back from work early just to pick me up. And he told her I was a hussy. And then... And then he asked her out on a date. Can you believe that, Granny? Doesn't surprise me in the least. Seven-eighths of all men are dirtier than dogs. Mm-hmm, I know that's right. Mom was so humiliated. She can't even show her face at church now. Look, darling, being a Southern woman is not an easy chore. You're expected to keep all your emotions just squished up inside and look good holding a parasol. But that's not healthy. And that's not fun either. <laughs> Sometimes we just have an impulse to do something crazy silly. We just got to let it out. Your mother doesn't understand that. I don't think she's got an impulsive bone in her body. But you and I do. And that's something that will set you apart from other women for the rest of your life. <laughs> now, as for this dean of yours, what's his name? Mr. Stern. Granny, are you going to have a talk with him? Well, I just might. <laughs> Can I help you? Why, yes, dear. I would like to speak to Mr. Stern. Oh, well, Dean Stern um, is in a very important meeting right now. You'd probably have to wait for at least an hour or two. Oh, honey, I'm too old to wait. Now, you just tell him that Blanche Gaskins, the grandmother of Kitty Thomas, is here to see him. Oh, it won't do any good, I can assure you. Well, then we got a problem. Because I either discuss this matter with Mr. Stern or I discuss it with the school board, of which I used to be a member. Why don't I just see if I can interrupt him? Oh, good choice, honey. I didn't know you used to be a school board member. Little white lie. Very Oh, shit. Crystal, your gun is a box of rocks. Well, don't help me out. Dean Stern will see you now, ma'am. What a pleasure. Please do come in. Why, thank you. Oh, 
be right back. Miss Gaskins, please have a seat. Yes, indeed, this is quite a pleasure. Now, what is it I can do for you? Well, I have one simple request, Mr. Stern. I want you to apologize to my granddaughter. I don't understand. Uh... <laughs> oh, Mr. Stern, honestly. Suspending a child for a harmless prank? I'm sure that you did something just as silly no when you... No true lady would expose her bottom in public. Oh, I see. You are an authority on what a lady would or would not do. Mr. Stern, we both know that Kitty has never been a problem before. As a matter of fact, she's never even served a detention. Now, why you would decide to suspend her... Headmaster Johnson, that... I Please, Miss Gaskins, do continue. More heinous than that, Mr. Stern, is the fact that you called my granddaughter a Jezebel and you accused her of sleeping around. And then you asked her mother for a date. Now, are you ready to be a man, Mr. Stern, and apologize to my sweet granddaughter? Or should I make a trip down to the school board's offices? Uh, I, no. <laughs> no, that, that won't be necessary. Uh, uh, I'm sure that we can remedy this amongst ourselves without involving the school board. <laughs> Crystal! Would you please send Kitty in? Go ahead. I'll be waiting in the hallway. Crystal, I'm waiting. She's not the brightest bulb on the chandelier. Kitty! Dear, please uh, have a seat. Kitty, your grandmother, sweet woman that she is, has brought it to my attention that perhaps I treated you a little disrespectfully the other day. That was not my intention. I hope that we can put all this behind us and just start fresh as a daisy. <laughs> Dean Stern, are you apologizing to me? Yes, Kitty, I, I am. Then I accept your apology. Well, that was very brave of you, Mr. Stern. I admire a man who admits when he's wrong. And I have just one more thing to say, Mr. Stern. As for what a lady may or may not do, you can never be too sure, especially if she's an old lady. Did you kill him? Perhaps you better contact the school nurse, dear. Come on, Lulu. She knocked his ass out. Kitty, hurry up, girl. They got the AC going full blast in here, and I'm beginning to feel a draft up my skirt. Headmaster! <laughs> Granny Blanche taught me many things. Love, self-respect, and generosity included. But most importantly, she taught me to always be myself. Never worry about others judging me. And to never let the Mr. Stearns of the world stand in my way. <laughs>